Hey everybody, let's talk about sensitivity labels and how we can automatically apply them to our data in certain conditions. So I wanna show you three options for automatically protecting our data in Microsoft. I'll show you the first one using the thick client inside Outlook, how we can have the end user get a pop-up or as the end user is editing the document, require that they label the document uh, a certain way. I'll show you how to use uh, auto labels inside of SharePoint Online and how we can automatically detect credit cards or HIPAA data in those solutions and without any user intervention, apply a label to the data. I'll also show you Defender for Cloud Apps option for deploying labels in the same way. Um, however, that's a great feature set if you have third-party data storage locations like Box or Dropbox, we can secure the data in that. So let's get into it. Let's look at those features and how they interact. All right. So the first experience I want to show you of auto applying sensitivity labels is the uh, in the thick client, in the Word, Outlook, uh, Excel client for our end users. This is a great option to really get the end users involved with labeling the content and is a great way to have them be the final say or help them to make better choices with our data. Right? And so we can set up a criteria for automatically suggesting to them or automatically applying to them. So in this case, um, if I'm working on a performance review for Jeff Leatherman, I have a sensitive info type in my org that is employee IDs, right? And so I'm detecting when an end user is working on a doc that has an employee ID, and then I am forcing them to put the label of HR data, right? So this is maybe a scenario where your human resources team is working with a lot of sensitive data. If we detect employee ID, we can automatically tell the HR team, hey, let's apply a label to this. Right, So here I have this document I'm working on, and as I'm typing, I will automatically suggest it, or when I save the document, it'll also automatically detect and apply this out. So in here, you can see that triggered, and this is the end user experience. I have a auto classification notification saying, hey, this has been labeled, and then we have this HR update, which is telling them, what, what can I now do with the label? What are my permissions with this? And so that feature is a really nice one. So let's look at what that looks like to configure and the, how do we do it as an admin. All right, so here we are in Compliance Center and I've gone to the Information Protection tab and let's go ahead and set up one of these labels or look at how I configured the HR label to in, interact this way. So we're gonna go to Labels and what we need to do to make this trigger is we need to go look at one of these labels and put the definitions associated with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Edit here and we're gonna skip over down into the Automatically Apply Data section. Okay, let's get on. And this is the auto labeling for files and email option. This is, again, using the Office client to automatically apply labels to this. And just like in your DLP policies, we're gonna use the same data definition engine to automatically apply this label. So essentially think of it as we need to go into each label and tell it what data should be associated with that. And so once we deploy this out, it will come automatically to your Outlook clients, and then we can start using this feature here. So that's how that works. We, of course, have lots of options for sensitive info types that we can use. So we have that full dictionary of options. So if I wanted to add credit card or something like that, I would come in and look for a credit card and then put it in here. And again, we can also control the accuracy. How accurate is Microsoft's guess about our data? We can adjust that to you know whatever our definitions. And then we can also only apply this in the case of, hey, this is lots of confidential data. So maybe if you have a multi-tier uh, confidential system, like highly confidential versus confidential, maybe you're gonna say one through five pieces of credit card, mark that as confidential, but six and above, mark that as you know highly confidential. So we can do that as an option. Finally, is the capability of what, what do we want to do? Do we want to force the label to happen or are we only going to suggest it to the end user? If you're suggesting it to the user, this can be a nice way to ease into using the solution um, and not you know just kind of take the decision out of your end user's hands, right? Because maybe it is their personal data, right? Some uh, you know regions have a you know the ability to allow end users to use personal data on their personal machine, right? So we should give the end user an option to label it as such. So that's kind of that option there. And then of course, the message that appears. 
So this is how you configure those end users. If you do modify an existing label that you already have deployed out, it will automatically start affecting everybody that uses it. So if you are going to test this, make sure you're using this on a test label that is not deployed widely out in your organization or make a new label that's only available to you. So that's it for the end user experience one. Let's show you the um, automatically applying labels via SharePoint and that auto apply feature. All right, so the second experience that I wanna show you is auto labeling the SharePoint sites back in. So this is a process that you would go through and have no interaction or it requires no interaction from the users to automatically label files stored in your SharePoint or OneDrive. So as the end user is working on the document, as soon as they begin saving it in any of your Office 365 tenants, we can trigger the process of coming in and start applying this. This will take about two minutes to configure uh, per document. It's pretty quick to have the backend process generate and put in here, but it can automatically detect and put it in. Here you can see I have previously labeled content that I have uploaded into here for testing and all of that kind of thing. A couple of things that you're gonna to wanna to notice about this is that this auto labeling engine from Microsoft only includes, at the time of this recording, um, the ability to label Word, PowerPoint, Excel documents, PowerPoints, Microsoft documents. PDFs are out of scope currently using auto labeling backend from Microsoft. It just doesn't work. I'll show you how we can do it in Defender for Cloud App. And there you can see pretty quick that auto label automatically turned on. So that's a great way to target your SharePoint sites and have this available, right? So maybe this is a project site and you want to use this for Project Falcon or the Phoenix project or something along those lines and everything associated with this project, you just want auto labeled, right? We can do that. We can also detect credit card sensitive data again and force auto labeling in those scenarios. So that can be very helpful as well. Let's show you the admin experience for this and how to get it up and running with it. All right, so back in compliance portal, we now are gonna switch over to auto labeling, right? Auto labeling again is that SharePoint non-user interactive labeling of content using sensitivity labels. So here you can see I have a couple of pre-made ones that I'm deployed out. Um, if I wanna take a look at these and let me, let me show you kind of how I configured these ones in my environment. So let's open up the one we just looked at. And we'll walk through kind of the onboarding experience. So the first thing that you need to do is select the workload that you wanna target. In my case, I'm targeting one SharePoint site. You should target one SharePoint site for testing. You don't wanna deploy this out to the whole org accidentally, right? But once you're ready to go, yeah, you can include this. You have obviously the site selector option. You can come in, in this case, again, I'm targeting my auto labeling demo site. All right, so once we select the location, we need to use and create and tell it what label we want to apply in what conditions. For my demo, I have a all data category that I use to try to force labeling to happen in all of it, but all of our sensitive info types from anything else, any of the DLP options are available again, right? So this is why this data, um, data classification service is so core to everything we do within Microsoft because it's used everywhere, right? In this case, if I wanted to use credit card numbers and force that label to happen in it, I can just program that in and I'm good to go. I can also do some exception planning in some scenarios, um, but for the most part, we are going to do this. We can also target when the content is shared outside the organization and automatically do that. But for the most part, I see orgs using just detect, hey, credit cards, hey, just detect social security number, PHI, all of that kind of stuff. So we'll go ahead and save that modification and next step is deciding what label do we want to actually apply this to. So again, based on any of our labels that we have in our org, we can select it and deploy this out. Okay. So good option there. Um, a lot of, you know, it makes sense, easy to do. Run policy in simulation mode. This is the default experience that you need to use and you have to use for Microsoft. They don't want you to accidentally apply labels, which is great, no accidents uh, here. Uh, and so every time you modify a policy, it will actually run in simulation mode and give you a little heads up about how much data it's going to apply before it actually takes effect. So that's that feature set, pretty easy to configure, a lot of planning though that goes into taking advantage of it. 
One other thing I do want to mention um, as part of this is that you can see here is that this file, even though it's in this repository, has the general use label. Um, and that's because my end user had already decided what type of data this is. So auto uh, labeling inside of Microsoft's AI or in the compliance center doesn't override what an end user has decided in this. If the end user has decided that this is general data, um, it will leave that as a the choice for here. So like, uh, for instance, our performance review, if I uploaded that in, it would leave it as a, that label and not override that. Okay. So that's the Microsoft uh, auto apply labels via um, the compliance center. All right, so third experience I wanna show you and probably more focused on the admin experience of it is using Defender for Cloud Apps to automatically label the content. From the end user perspective, they're not gonna see any difference between using the Compliance Center auto labeling or Defender for Cloud App. However, there are some scenarios where this can be beneficial um, for labeling the file. End user is gonna still have the exact same item. They upload a file, the, the file will automatically get labeled. This solution using Defender for Cloud Apps is quite a bit slower than the auto labeling in the Compliance Center. So if speed is a, a concern or the main concern, definitely use the Compliance Center one. Um, however, a couple of things that you can do differently with Defender for Cloud App and a couple of reasons why it's helpful to know about it is the ability to label PDF files. And again, at the time of this recording, we don't have that capability. I'm sure Microsoft is working on it and trying to address that. I know there's a ton of work that's gone into labeling PDFs in the last couple of weeks that we're seeing come out from Microsoft. So I'm sure they'll be addressing this with the uh, Compliance Center or Microsoft Purview auto labeling. So that's what feature one that you can do is that you can do it, you can do this. A couple of things to note is that the SharePoint app does you take over the naming using Defender for Cloud App. It actually renames who was the person that last modified the file. So it'll change the ownership of it. Final thing that you may want to use this or reason why you might want to use this is that this also gives the ability to override the end user's choice, right? So end user that filed uh, and put in like general data on a file that had credit cards, you can actually override their choice using Defender for Cloud App. Final reason why, I think I may have said final reason already once, final reason why you may want to use Defender for Cloud App is third party storage locations. If you have a corporate box, Dropbox, uh, you can come in and trigger Defender for Cloud App to detect and label content in those storage locations. So which is really cool feature set to take advantage of. So let's show you the admin experience of Defender for Cloud App. All right, so here we are in Defender for Cloud App and let's look at what it takes to deploy using Defender for Cloud Apps. So um, for those that are not familiar with this portal, it's portal.cloudhappsecurity.com. Uh, and this is how we can get into using this product to auto-label content. It does require additional setup, which I will not cover in this video. However, essentially what you wanna do is you wanna check to see if file scanning has been enabled in your Defender Cloud App. I'll probably make another a video solely talking about Defender for Cloud App because this is the Swiss Army knife of Microsoft security products and you definitely wanna be able to take advantage of it. Um, but for now, if you see that file enable, file scanning is enabled, you're in a good spot. The second place that you need to check is under your settings component and you need to make sure that information protection is enabled for Defender for Cloud App. If we don't have these capabilities turned on, um, we're not gonna get this up and running. So if you wanna take advantage of it, you wanna use Defender for Cloud App, we need to come in and enable both file scanning as well as information protection syncing, right? So this product doesn't naturally have access to the rest of your Microsoft encryption files. So grant that. And then what we're going to be do, need to do is go into policies and start using this for detection. I'm going to go to information protection policies and we'll create a new policy. So once we create a new policy, we get kind of the default experience from Microsoft in here. And you'll notice they have a couple of pre-built ones that you can take advantage of. So if you were looking at PII, we can use this and automatically detect it. Right? So this will automatically apply the template and this might be a good place to start with. So in this case, we will be detecting all data stored in your Office 365 box, Dropbox in that case. If you wanted to scope it down, you can come in and go in scope to might be 
Microsoft, uh, your Office 365. And then if you have your Box or Dropbox integrated, you'll also be able to see those in here as well and scope it to those solutions. So uh, for the first part, we have this set up. For the built-in DLP engine, this is actually native to Defender for Cloud Apps. This is their own separate from the Compliance Center data protection pieces. However, we can use the ones in the Compliance Center, and I would recommend using all the same definitions from Compliance Center as part of it. We get all of the features from the Compliance Center and we can automatically do that, right? So in this case, we can come in and use ABA routing numbers, credit cards, whatever you want. And again, all three of our options for credit card are in here from our testing perspective. Get the same control mechanism that we showed previously. We get the accuracy ratio, but it's in percentage accuracy, right? So if we wanted to drop this down and make it like the medium classification, this would be 65 to 100. Instant counts, same as in your DLP engine or how we showed you previously in the auto labeling. Inspect protected files, right? This will re-inspect files using encryption, right? So maybe there's an encryption, but maybe the end user picked the wrong encryption option. We can come in and, and show that. Unmask, by default, when it does the detection, it's gonna show you the masked info on the file, which is really nice. You don't have to see everything under the hood. And I'll show you that experience in a, in a second. And then here is the labeling option. So in governance, this is where we control what label gets deployed out. So first thing, start with your detection. You can just turn this on and test Defender for Cloud App, making sure it's triggering properly before you ever start labeling a file. So think of this as uh, if you save this right now, you'd be in like that monitor only mode. It'll alert you to the admin center, but it won't do any other actions. When you're ready to move into an action mode, that's where you need to come into governance. And here we can see apply sensitivity label, right? Again, all of my labels are available to me for use here. And then this is a nice feature, override user defined labels. So we don't get that in the other center yet. Um, I'm sure it's coming from Microsoft. Every, Microsoft's always working on awesome new stuff. So here we can automatically override any choice that the end user made, right? So if end user uploaded credit cards and said, oh, this is general data on our corporate SharePoint, we can actually override their choice and say, actually, it should be confidential internal use only, right? Things of that nature. So that's how you can configure that. Um, also, I do want to note apply to all files. You can target specific SharePoint sites using these apply to capabilities. Um, you know, um, and target specific folders in the site and things of that nature. So you will be able to search here. It takes a little bit of um, trial and error when you're doing these search and try to find the folders that you want to look for, uh, but it, most of them are available. So that is something you can take tackle and do. Okay. So that's Defender for Cloud App, and that's how you can set up a policy. What it will look like in the um, when we're inspecting this is, let me show you that experience here. So I'm gonna go back to policies. I'll show you a pre-made one that has already have its detections in here. So in information protection, we need to go to files that have been labeled. So in this case, I was looking for SSN match on these documents. And so we can pull it up and show you that experience of what we have in here. So in this case, um, you know, we have items that have been uploaded to our SharePoint site. And so we're able to click on this and open up and see who's upgrading it, the location it's stored. If there is collaborators, such as external users, like my um, corporate account, I can see who those users are. I can able to click on this and open up the full SharePoint and see like who has access to these files, right? And we can pull up all of that data and see who it is. When we look at these policy match, if I wanted to see like, maybe I don't trust this to say, this is you know the data piece in here. Uh, one of my very good friends, uh, Sunny, showed me that you can come in and, oh, didn't work that time, actually click on these policy match and see the mass data piece in here. There we go. So in this case, we see the mass data piece and we're able to kind of verify um, that this has been 
you know, correctly identified. So we see the surrounding text that Robert, the visa, and then we see in here maybe the, the data piece and it's in this XX format and then accompanying data or other data is in this pound format. Okay. So that's a great feature set to have and that's how you can review it. So I hope this helps um, when you start looking at all of your options and how you want to tackle automatically applying sensitivity labels to documents. I did think after starting this video of a fourth kind of teaser that'll give you, right? We've been talking about a lot of Office 365 data, but what about all of the rest of your data, file shares and things of that nature? Well, Microsoft has an Azure Information Protection Scanner that you can actually deploy on premise and use to detect in your file shares the same type of sensitive data and apply the same sensitivity labels based on the detections there. So uh, this is a cool capability to know about. Uh, it's pretty in-depth deployment. If you're interested in learning about that, let me know and I'll make a video on it, um, deploying it out, what it looks like, some gotchas with it. Um, hope this helps. And if you have questions, please reach out and put in the comments uh, the questions that you have. Take care all.